Hey, hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to Mastering Protocol series with uh, AXI. So today we will look at uh, one byte read and uh, the scenario that we will analyze is uh, we will issue four reads of length one byte to the first four locations of this uh, address range and then we will issue another four reads of length one byte to the uh, last four location of this particular uh, address range. Uh, just note that this series is uh, brought to you by uh, GrowDV where you can uh, self-assess yourself. So uh, I have already loaded the uh, AXI transactions for read in the uh, Curiosity Transaction Analysis dashboards. So here, uh, the first thing we will look at is the AXI transactions and uh, this transaction indicates uh, either the transactions issued by your high-level sequencing test bench or a software issued transaction. So I have filtered for the transaction length of one uh, byte and then uh, this is the transaction count. Uh, this transaction count is common between uh, common parameter between uh, your high level stimulus and the channel level activity for ease of the correlation. So our, our, all these eight are of read types and you can see that uh, this is the we are issuing the read to first four bytes and then we are issuing the read to the uh, last four bytes. Uh, so, uh, uh, if we quickly before we jump into the uh, channel level activity, uh, if we quickly look into the AXI spec, um, unlike a write data channel, uh, we had a write strobe uh, to indicate which byte lanes are valid when we were doing the unaligned address read. Uh, but when we look at the read data channel, there isn't any uh, strobe signal. So, it is a responsibility of the uh, master to figure out which byte lanes are valid based on the address that it has issued uh, before extracting uh, that particular data. Uh, so now if we look at now now that we had looked at uh, we had we had understood that 1 to 8 is the IDs where we had issued the uh, transaction length of uh, 1 byte. So I have filtered the uh, 1 to 8 over here. Um, let me zoom this a little bit so that it, the visibility is better. Uh, so uh, I have filtered the information from uh, 1 to 8 over here. Now, uh, when we look at over here, so if we look at, I think here uh, it's, it's really very simple, right? So on AR channel, uh, we are issuing um, we are issuing the corresponding AR address, uh, AR length of 0, uh, indicating a burst of 1 and AR size of 2 encoding indicating uh, 4 bytes and we are using incrementing uh, burst type and um, uh, then there is a corresponding uh, read data that, that shows up on the channel and the RID would be matching. Now uh, which byte to pick up is, is up to master depending upon the address that has issued. Uh, so when it has issued the 001, it is supposed to pick up the uh, from the byte lane one. Uh, so so that is a responsibility of the master. Uh, for us to simple uh, thing that we can notice is the ARID would be matching with the RID showing up on the data channel. So uh, I think uh, from that point of view, the read of one byte is very simple. There isn't uh, much of a difference. Uh, when we look at uh, from the different address point of view, uh, even when we come to the data bus width boundary or, uh, you know, uh, whether we, we are uh, going towards the 4KB, when we do the one byte, uh, there is no change. Uh, for every one byte read, we are going to get one uh, read uh, data channel response. And uh, if we look at the R last over here, it will be true. Uh, so and and it's a responsibility of the master to pick up the appropriate byte uh, in the absence of uh, uh, strobe signals uh, and the whatever the request that we have issued on the uh, read address channel uh, the corresponding ARID needs to be uh, matched with the uh, RID uh, when we uh, issue the corresponding uh, read data. So from that point of view, I think uh, it's it's quite uh, simple. Uh, I hope that this session is useful. Uh, if you have any questions, please post it in the comments. Thank you.